The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws seed on the land, night and day while he sleeps. When he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How? He does not know. Of his own accord, the land produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, What can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It is like a mustard seed which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet once it is sown, it grows into the bigger scrub of them and put out big branches so that the birds of the air can shelter in its shade. Using many parables like this, he spoke the word to them so far as they were capable of understanding it. We will not, he would not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do you like or do you love to plant things? Yes, some of you say that. Well, I used to. During my younger days and my formative years, not that I stopped liking doing such things, just that sometimes I don't have the time to deal with them, especially when duties demand that I leave the community for some days and sometimes. I used to have bad experiences of those when it came to babysit my mum's potted plants, in particularly cactuses, which I have to do once in a while when my mum and my sis go back to Sabah for long vacations and holidays. Well, these pricky, cute little fellas for most part charm you with their cute little fingers. I know all of you like cactuses too as well because they are cute. But oh boy, when you neglect them or even giving them too much love for once or twice, all oh hell will break loose. Not to say the sense of defeat once you see your once thriving plant fades and withers away into nothingness just because you are not there to see them for two days. And to be honest, every time my mom comes back from her trip, she has to be content with at least one or two casualties due to my negligence. Well, I might not have green fingers like I used to have, but God, on the other hand, knows how to make the highest branch of the cedar tree grow and bear fruit. He also knows how to make the seeds sprout and grow. However, among all the marvels that the Lord has done in today's readings, there is one thing, or a parable, that we have to stop, marvel, and reflect. That is the parable of the mustard seed. Now, what is a mustard seed then? And how does a mustard seed look like? Well, if you are planning to wait for me to show you how does a mustard seed looks like, you'll be disappointed because I'm not going to show you anything here. But first and foremost, I would like to warn all of you that there is one thing that we all have to know that the biblical mustard seed that Jesus Christ was referring to is not exactly the usual biji sawi that we commonly know and eat. It is a way smaller seed which is believed by some scholars that Jesus might be referring to another sort of seed from another sort of mustard tree called Sabadora Persica. And again, there's no picture that I'm going to show you. But anyway, this scrub which produces seeds smaller than a common mustard is a seed that can turn into a pig tree of about two meters or so, big enough 
and to have branches that are strong enough to support many sorts of birds, big and small, in its canopy. However, speculations are still subject to much debate. Some scholars in favour of the small scrub, like the common mustard plant, strongly believe that Jesus was only using an expression that is both oriental and figurative, which is meant to be exaggerated in the first place for the sake of storytelling. Now, what does it mean then, oriental and figurative? Since most of the time when you look at Jesus, he always comes with blue eyes and blonde hair. Well, first and foremost, we have to understand that Jesus did not come from Europe or the States. He comes from the Middle East. And being so, there are a lot of sayings that are figurative in their particular context. Oriental in such a way that, you know, whenever we want to tell stories, we tend to exaggerate them in the most Oriental and Asian fashion. Just to give you an example about cockroaches. When you see a small cockroaches like this, if you're afraid of them, it will be as big as your palm size. And wow, when they fly, the first thing that comes into your mind that this cockroach is a mere monster that is coming to attack you. Okay, even though it means you no harm. So, story like this and culture like this tends to tell story that way. Okay? However, for all of us commoners who are here today, whether this mustard plant that Jesus is referring to is the common mustard plant or whether it is caldal or Salvadora persica that has the potential of becoming a big tree like scrub, those details, whether it is a big tree or a small scrub, are not too important because the first reading already gives us some important points. And if one read the first reading that is from the prophet Ezekiah, um, chapter 17, in its own context, you will realize that, that the great cedar tree our Lord God took the new shoot from will subsequently withered and died. Therefore, what is most important here, of course, are questions regarding about its fruits and its relations with the kingdom of God, and most of all, how does one can attain it? Now let us just backtrack our mind a little bit and let us ask ourselves questions. Why the great cedar tree then can never withered, end up, died and widowed? Well, the cedar tree which our Lord took the new branches from broke God's covenant. Now how can a tree break a covenant if it is just merely a tree? Well, truth to be told, this is not just any ordinary tree, but a representation of the king of Judah. Now, during the time when King Zedekiah was king, and when he was reigning over Judah, our Lord God, through the prophet Jeremiah and Ezekiah, expected King Zedekiah to be loyal and submit himself to the covenant that he made with the king of Babylon that is Nebuchadnezzar. However, due to his lack of faith, he played politics. Oh, why so? Because if you're under a great authority like that, you cannot simply do the things that you like. So in order to make sure that he's free from this problem, guess what he did? He sent ambassadors to Egypt, pleading for help, hoping that Egypt, that is a big country that time, to fight against Babylon. But what he has is totally different from what he thinks. Not only did he cut short his reign in his kingdom, but he had to see his son killed in front of his eyes. And later he was sent and remained in Babylon until his death. And this whole story perhaps can serve as a cautionary tale for all of us who are here today. That if we want to bear fruits, and if we want to live, we have to keep his covenant despite all the difficulties and uneasiness that we face in our daily lives. If you do not believe, look at the life of King Zedekiah. If he did not break his oath with Babylon, nor his covenant with God, 
despite how heavy the yoke he has to carry and how low God has to put down his ego, his dynasty will continue to live and flourish, perhaps like the new shoot that God has already planted where it will become a majestic cedar where birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, where every wing things in the shade of its boughs. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the kingdom of God is not something abstract, nor was it about God's secret housing plan that only reserves to a few elites. It is a kingdom for all of us, especially to those who listen to his words not only to keep it, but also to do it. So let us be living stones today that courageously build strong foundations for our next generation of Christians, those little birds of the air, that is, who are depending on us to build a strong foundation, so they too in turn will become the strong foundation for the next generation. So let us, I pray in our ways, aspire to please Him that is our Lord, whether we are at home, in the body, or away. For one day, we must all appear before the mercy seat of Christ, and I hope that that very day itself, your report card will be good, and you'll finally receive the recompense which you long deserved. Amen. <laughs>